this is a quick tutorial on how to save data in your Roblox game. So you want to save data and to do that you need to use the data store service. Okay, so to get the data store service, don't mind these uh, events down here, we'll get to them in a minute. To get the service, we're just going to firstly make a variable. Okay, and uh, just to get it with the game, colon get service. And the name of the service you might have guessed is data store service. Okay, so we've got the service and now we need to create a data store. Okay, so to create a data store, once again, we're going to set it to a variable. So I'm going to call the variable my data store. And we're then just going to set it to data store service. And to create a new data store, you say colon get data store. And give it a name inside of these brackets. So I'm just going to call it my data store, just like that. All right. So we've made our data store, and now we need to store some data inside of it. So each data store will save um, values for players. Okay. So you can uh, you can save data to a data store by saying uh, the data store, which is my data store, and then colon set async. Okay. So set async uh, saves data. Okay. And uh, we need to uh, give two pieces of information in order to save data. Okay, we need to give the player who we're going to save it to, and we also need to save a value. So we need to have a unique identifier for each player. Okay, because each player is going to be different to another, and different data is going to be stored for um, for different players. Okay, so a unique identifier uh, is something such as the player's user ID. We don't use their name because if a player um, changes their name, then their previous data is going to be lost because it's tied to that name. But their user ID is constant and doesn't change. OK, so we will use the player's ID and then we will save a value to this data store. So if you were saving some cash, then you would save the amount of cash. So what we're going to do, we're just going to um, create a simple script which saves the amount of cash you have in a game and then it loads it back in when you join the game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, get rid of this line here. Uh, you know how it works now, how to how to actually save data. Um, but let's just go ahead and quickly add some leader stats uh, for this player and also we'll add some cash uh, for them because uh, we, what we'll do is once we've got that in the game we'll save it and then we'll load it back in um, when they leave so we'll just say local leader stats uh, equals instance dot new folder leader stats dot name equals leader stats and leader stats dot parent equals player you should know how this all works a uh, data store is uh, it's kind of like an advanced topic so you shouldn't already know how to how to do this stuff so I'm just inserting a cash uh, value now in, inside of that uh, leader stats folder okay cash dot name equals cash and cash dot parent equals leader stats okay so I've got some uh, cash in there got a leader stats uh, if we go ahead and uh, check this out in game we should have the leaderboard there uh, there we go yep and now what we can do is we can firstly uh, go down here into player removing and work on saving the data okay so whenever you want to save the data I said you need to use set async now sometimes data stores can fail and Roblox won't tell you about it it's, uh, data stores can, can sometimes go down something might go wrong when saving and so the player's data might not be saved and this can cause an error in your entire script and cause it to break so we don't want that to happen and so what we'll do is we're going to wrap the uh, set async in something called a p call and if there's an error when we do that set async uh, then it's going to be contained within that p call it's not going to break the entire script okay so that's why we're going to do a p call so to do, to do one it's very very simple we're firstly just going to write out our set async so we can say um, my data store okay and we can say colon set async and we're going to want to then have our unique id which is going to be the player's user id and as well as that i'm going to concatenate it uh, because if you're having multiple keys in one data store say that you're saving um their cash their and their xp okay if you use the same id 
sorry, yeah, the same key, which is just their ID, you're going to overwrite it when you save the XP and when you save the cash. So we need to make them different. So I'm writing the player's user ID and then I'm concatenating it with a string, okay? And this string is just going to have a hyphen and the, um, the, the value that we're saving. So in this case, cash okay it's up to you it just makes it unique okay so once we've put the key in we're just going to then um get the uh, the value which we're going to save to that key so it will be um player dot leader stats dot cash whoops made a spelling mistake uh leader stats dot cash dot value okay now we can't say cash because it's a local variable and it's only within the scope of player added and because we're outside of that event into the player removing we have to um, say player.leaderstats.cash.value okay so that has got the data but obviously we need to wrap it in a p call so we can say p call and then in brackets we're going to just do a function here so we're actually putting the set async in a function and then we're calling it with a p call if if that makes sense and um, because this is the function and we're just wrapping it in p call here with these brackets so um p call there it will contain it if there's an error but um it also gives us two bits of information whether these whether wh whatever happened in the function was a success and if it wasn't a success, if there was an error, it will tell us the error message. So we save these two pieces of data to a variable. OK, so we've got the success. So whether it was a success or not, and we've also got the error message that it will return back if there is an error. And then we just say is equal to this P call. OK, and so if everything was a success, then success is going to be true. OK, so if success is equal to true or just if success, then we can print data successfully saved. Okay, so we could say player data successfully saved. Okay, uh, else if it was not a success, we can print there was an error when saving data. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a warn, and warn is the same as print, it's just in orange text so you can see it. I'm going to print out the error message okay so if there was an error it's going to print out what the error message was and there you go we've just saved a player's data to their key and now we need to get that data so we can load it to their cache so go back into the player added event here and we need to do get async so we're going to do exactly the same thing again local success comma error message because we're doing another p call equals p call function okay and inside of here, we're going to do our get async. So it's pretty much the same as set async. However, this time, because we're not actually setting a value to the data store, we're just getting a value, we only need the player's key. So we can say my data store, colon get async. And inside of here, we're going to add their key. So player dot user ID dot dot. And we're going to have our string as we've concatenated it to cache. Uh, player ID, user, dot user ID and then cache that will be the player's key and that is getting the data but we need to store this data as uh, to a variable okay so I'm going to create a variable outside of this p call and I'm going to call it local data I'm going to leave it at nothing for now so it's currently set to nil I'm just making this this variable right now initializing it okay so if if the p call it goes smoothly and we get the data I can then set data to whatever is returned from the get async so data isn't going to be nil anymore because it's actually set to something but if it wasn't a success okay then data is going to be nil okay so we can say if success uh, then we can say data and we just want to say cash dot value equals data okay so success is basically the same thing as saying if data is not equal to nil because if there is something set to data we know that, that, that some data has been um, sent back here from the get async so you can say if data is equal nil but I'm going to say success because if it wasn't a success then we can get our error message from the p call and we can say warn error message and we can also print there was an error whilst getting your data okay so that is how you get data and this is how you save data okay very very simple uh, a lot of people think it's really hard, but really it isn't. Um, and you might want to consider saving data at other points in your game, not only when the player uh, leaves.
okay so maybe you want to save in timed increments uh, in case the server shuts down maybe when they buy cash in your game then you want to save the data as well because if they've just made a purchase you want to make sure that that uh, the, the cash that they've just bought has been saved etc and I also need to let you know there are a few limits with data stores so you if you keep saving too often then you'll hit a uh, a limit and then those data store requests will become throttled okay and that means that uh, you, you, you're you not allowed to make any more data store requests for a while because you've hit your limit um, because if you made too many uh, requests then data stores would, would start to crash okay you can read more on the Roblox developer hub okay they've got a great article on it and I'll leave a link to it in the description um, but essentially there are some limits you need to make sure that you keep within them here we go data store errors and limits you have some error codes here if you're getting some errors and we have limits here so on get async you can only send uh, 60 plus the number of players currently in game times 10 so if you had two players in game then uh, that would be I think uh, 80 requests per minute and so if you throttle uh, you, you throttle if you go over this this limit and you can see for set async and on update as well which we might look at in a future video so thanks for watching this video it was on how to uh, actually do data stores if you want to see it in action we can go ahead and check it out in game and I'll show you that it worked if we just go ahead and load up Roblox here and just wait for the game to load then uh, what we'll do is we'll give ourselves some cash and then rejoin the game so if I just say console and go into the server here and I say game dot players dot alvin underscore blocks dot leader stats dot uh, cash dot value equals 50 okay and then I leave the game and let's just wait for the server to shut down you don't have to do this but I'm just going to show you though uh, if we go into a new server there we go then hopefully our data should have loaded and we should have 50 cash when we join there we go we have 50 cash uh, and if we go into the console and click on server uh, okay it didn't print out for us um, because if we go back into studio here let's go back in whoops there we go um, because we I, I, we didn't print when it was successfully loaded so you can print and it would have printed out success um, but you can see it didn't print out there was an error so everything went well and our data was added in so there you go that's how you do data stores in your Roblox game to save cash um, I'll do some videos on how to save other things such as uh, items on a plot in a base uh, tools in your inventory although it is quite similar it's all about though just using set async and get async so i hope that was useful if it was please leave a like don't forget to subscribe to my channel because we're nearly at 100,000 subscribers now uh, so thanks for the support and i'll see you in the next video